Hello everyone, good morning. So welcome to our discussion for today. So in today's discussion, we will know more about folk literature and also the one of the subtopic of the folk literature, which is folk tales. So before we dig deeper about that one, um, may I call Miss Ogzang to do the honor in leading the prayer. Hello, um, I, calling the attention of Miss Gail. All right, so, um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so here she goes. So, Miss Gail, can you please do the honor in leading the prayer? Thank you so much. Shall let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for our time together today. Help us to be open minded and receptive to your work in and through us. We pray that we may be receptive to your guidance in all things and that we may become more like Jesus Christ in our actions, attitudes, thoughts, and words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, thank you for that one. So once again, everyone, good morning. So today we are going to talk about folk, folk literature and without far ado, let's know more uh, let's know more about what is folk literature and also the subtopic which is folk tales so next slide please all right so what is folk literature folk literature also called folklore or oral tradition the lore traditional knowledge and beliefs of cultures having no written language it is transmitted by wood i'm sorry um, by word of mouth and consists as thus written in literature of both prose and verse narratives, poems and songs, meets, dramas, rituals, proverbs, ripples, and the like. Nearly all known peoples now or in the past have produced it. Furthermore, folk literature refers to cultural artifacts that can be committed to a written form like stories or songs. The primary aim of folklore is folklore or folk sorry folk literature is to preserve oral traditions so since we know already what is a folk li literature let's move on to its subtopic which is folk tales so uh, folk tales is one of the subtopic of the folk literature tales traditional stories that have been passed down orally from one generation to another within a particular culture or community they often feature common characters and themes such as trickster heroes and magical creatures folk tales can be found in many different cultures cultures around the world and are often used to convey moral lessons or cultural values both folk tales and folk literatures are important cultural artifacts that provide insight into the beliefs, values, and customs of a particular group of people. They are often studied by scholars and used in education to help students understand different cultures and ways of life. So, um, example of the folk tales is Beauty and the Beast. So, we all know what is Beauty and the Beast naman, no? Kita tara sa TV. So, let's know more about the story of Beauty and the Beast. And can you do the honor in introducing the summary of the story, Mr. Brian? Thank you. So... Uh, here's the summary of The Beauty and the Beast. The Beauty and the Beast is a heartfelt story about the birth of love and the capability of love to transform the way you look at people you love. 
The moral of this fairy tale is that person's beauty comes from a heart in love and when the beauty realizes the inner beauty of the beast and the feelings, it has the outer appearance means nothing to her anymore. This story is about true love which transforms the beast into a prince. In real life, not only fairy tales, every person we consider to be a soulmate is a beautiful prince or princess. The fairy tale has a happy ending because the great love between the beauty and the beast was real and when the beauty declared the love for the beast, he transformed into a beautiful prince. So that's the summary of the story, The Beauty and the Beast. Now let us know the settings of The Beauty and the Beast. So a small town, provincial town. The story usually begins in a small, quaint village where the protagonist, Belle, lives with her father. This setting is often depicted as being rustic with cobblestone streets, wooden houses, and a central square where people gather. Yeah. Next one, we have the Beast's Castle. This is the enchanted castle where the Beast lives. It is usually depicted as being grand and opulent, yeah. with sprawling gardens, a grand ballroom, and various rooms and halls. The castle is often shown to be hidden away in the remote forest or mountain, and is surrounded by a magical barrier to keep intruders out. Next one, we have the enchanted forest. In some versions of story, the beast castle is located deep within an enchanted forest. This setting is often depicted as being dark, poor body, and filled with magical creatures like talking animals and fairies. Now we have the village pub. The village pub is a common setting for scenes where the villagers gather and discuss the events of the story. So it is often depicted as being cozy and warm with a fireplace, wooden tables, and benches. Lastly, we have the town square. The town square is where various events and festivities take place throughout the story. It is often depicted as being bustling with activity, with merchants selling goods, children playing, and people socializing. So those are the settings of the story, Beauty and the Beast. And next is the character descriptions of the story entitled Beauty and the Beast. So we have here Lumiere. So he is Maitri de turning into a candelabra. So fancies himself as a ladies man. Longs desperately to be human once more. Very welcoming and hospitable. Lovable if a bit cheeky. Loyal to his master and good friends with Cogsworth. So next character is Cogsworth. So he is stirring into a club, uptight and tries to be strict when he doesn't command enough authority. Control freak who likes everything in order, tries to obey the beast's order out of fear and likes to see himself as the experienced head of the household. Next is Mrs. Potts, a kindly motherly woman, very reassuring and always looking out for other people mostly her child cheap party but next is cheap a young sprightly and innocent very much believes in true love as the cure to everything naive yet feisty can be played by a girl in in production a cheap teacup next is babette so she is sexy and voluptuous she knows it too however she's not overly sexual it's more flirtatious, has feelings for Lumiere, young and not particularly smart, transitioning into a feather duster. So next. Next is we have Belle. So Belle is the main character in the story. She is intelligent, loving, kind and friendly, a dreamer who wants a life full of adventure loves to read and has a vibrant imagination bored in her town devoted to her father townsfolk thinks she's odd and very beautiful next is 
Beast, also the main character in the story. So he is a figure haunted by his past mistakes, quick temper, and prone to anger. Angry at himself for what he did but takes it out on others. Despite this, he has an inner beauty, he used to be a prince, therefore he is noble. And next is Gaston, a very egotistical and in love with himself. The town hero and knows it, a hunter, strong, loves the attention he gets from the town, especially from girls, quite cruel and malicious, happy to manipulate people and use them, such as Maurice, to get what he wants. Next is Lifu. So Lifu is Gaston's dim-witted devoted servant, easily afraid but also very loyal to Gaston. Has a cruel side to him too as he's happy to encourage Gaston's plans. Can be played by a girl but will be portrayed as male. Next is Maurice. So Maurice is odd but a gentle and kind bumbling old man. Similar to Belle in that he's a dreamer and a bit of an outcast. Loves Belle more than anything in the world. Next character would be Mim de la Grand Bouche or the Wardrobe. So he used to be a famous opera singer and still trying to hold onto that fame. Kindly nonetheless and harbors feelings for Cogsworth, partly a wardrobe. So next is Monsieur de Arque. So old, creepy and malevolent owner of the town's mental asylum. Enjoys locking people away and gets excited by Gaston's evil plan. So next is the three silly girls. So three young women in the village who are obsessed and infatuate, infatuated with Gaston, always seen with each other, hysterically depressed when they realize Gaston is going to propose to Belle, but don't let it get in their way of meeting up with him. So next is the villagers. There are several characters that live in Belle's small provincial town. They are merchants with a simple lives their small town mindset leads to leads them to regard bell and maurice as odd they're easily led and follow the crowd so we have a named enchanted objects former servants to the beast these characters are under the effects of the enchantress spell and as such are gradually transitioning into household objects they want to become human again and break the curse so are determined to find love for the beast. And lastly is the wolves. So there are six wolves that reside in the forest and prey on lost humans. They are hungry and therefore dangerous. Will most likely be cast with dancers as the wolf attacks can be choreographed chaos. So those are the characters in the story. Next would be Miss Uksa. Okay, now let's move on to Beauty and the Beast plot descriptions. Let's start first with the introduction or the exposition. Learning the history of the prince or beast and, the, and then Belle walking through the town singing, other characters including the villain Gaston are introduced and some history is given as to who Belle is and where she and others fit in this town. An inciting incident, um, Belle's father lost in the woods and being chased by wolves shows us to find sanctuary in the beast's castle. For the rising, uh, rising action, Gaston proposes and Belle refuses. He swears to have her as his wife no matter what he has to do. Belle searches for her father, finds him and locked in the beast's castle. And she offers to become the beast prisoner. We learn about the curse on the castle beast. Bella runs away and the beast saves her. They become friends. The beast tries to win her love. Bella's father is sick and he lets her go. The townspeople find out about the beast and they go to kill him while Belle tries to stop them. Okay, so for the climax, Gaston is beating up the beast. 
but the but then Bell arrives, the turning point, and instead of losing, he starts to uh, he starts to fight back and defeats Gaston. Following action, Bell and the Beast are together again, and she professes her love for him. The Beast changes magically back into the Prince. All the enchanted objects turn into people. Resolution. The curse is broken and everyone happily watches Belle and the prince waltz the right away. Okay, so that was the plot description of the Beauty and the Beast. Now let's move on to the theme. The theme of Beauty and the Beast revolves around the transformative power of love and the importance of looking beyond appearances. The story teaches at as that true beauty lies within and that it is impossible to see it is possible to see the good in others even when they appear frightening or intimidating the theme also emphasizes the importance of selflessness and sacrifice in relationships Belle is willing to give up her freedom and potentially her life to serve, save her father and later on she is willing to stay with a uh, peace even though it means giving up her chance to chance to be with someone who is more conventionally attractive the beast in turn le uh, learns to put someone else need above his own and becomes more compassionate and caring as a result ultimately the theme of beauty and the beast is about finding love and acceptance in and unexpected places and about learning to see beyond appearances and appreciate the true beauty of others also the moral of beauty and the beast um that is that we should um we should value in more characteristics such as kindness over super, uh, superficial qualities such as wit or appearances and love moves in mysterious ways it also teaches us that if you really truly uh, you really truly love someone you should follow your instinct and disregard others uh, what others think and they may see him as a beast from far away but they never take a look um, closer to him so if you uh, also only trust what you see and what you feel and be the guide of your own destiny that would be all thank you all right thank you everyone for sharing the summarization of the story entitled beauty and the beast the settings of the story the characters of the story the plot and under plot are introduction rising action climax falling action the noma or more likely we know the resolution and lastly the theme so um since we already know what is um folk literature and it's one of the its subtopic and so all the fairy tale stories is different um different lessons that we can gain from them and can also be able to somehow change our perspective on that something all right so once again um folk literature is a written form of language uh um, it's no written form of language it can be transmitted orally and it's by generation and generation and part of the folk literature is um one of the part of the literature folk literature is um folk tales um the common examples are fairy tales which we um gave you the whole story of the beauty and the beast so i hope you learned something from our today's discussion about folk literatures folk tales and the example of the folk tales so thank you so much for listening and have a great day everyone that's all bye bye